Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks now. I was out working last week and then up to Monday this week. But, you know, in my spare time, I did get some stuff done down in here in the front end. All that stuff is new. Everything is new. And then in the rear, in the back end here, I've been going along and getting that, like there's new rubber in there. And then I had to do some welding underneath there to fix up where where it wasn't very good again. Take things apart and you find bits that need a bit of welding. Anyhow, but here we are, and I haven't put out a video for a couple of weeks, so here, here's what I've been doing. You'll see everything. Hope you like it. Bye for now. Yeah, yeah, so here we go. It's uh, time to do work underneath the car. So all this, there's some, some bits here. You see that? Is that in focus? Likely not. Press that button there. Yeah, maybe that's in focus now. You see that it's come apart here. Don't know why, but I'll fix that. And then I've got all these rubbers that go everywhere like this. Too many hands here again, eh? This thing here. Where is it? Get in here. This thing right here that goes up and down. There's a rubber at the top here. It's all rotten. A rubber at the bottom that's all rotten and then these rubbers that are inside here are rotten and then over here this would be let me see the control arm sort of thing the rubber in there is rotten and then up in here how do I, I don't know how I'm gonna get that apart but you can even see I don't know if you can see that on yeah you can like to see see right there where my finger is that should be rubber not a gap there so those all got to be changed and I've got all these pieces in a box over there. I'll take them out and spread them out on the floor in a minute and then back on the back end. Oh, wait, right, wait till I get my light. Can't remember. Got to remember to bring my light with me. Then back on the back end, like that axle there is requiring some attention because this is supposed to be connected, the rubber, but I got two new axles for it like that go from there to there. And the other side from there to there and then these rubbers like there's rubbers on those things that are all rotten and i've got replacements for that and replacements for that one and then that big rubber that goes right in that thing there don't know how to get it out but i'm going to work on that and then i've got a replacement rubber to go in there so we'll see how that one works out and then it might be fairly roadworthy after I get that stuff done. We'll just take a look and see. Anyhow, I'm going to get started on it here. I'll, I'll pull out all the stuff I have. I got lots of stuff. I'll pull it out and put it on the floor and then take a picture of it. Yeah, so there it all is. Like the There's shock absorbers for the back. There's springs for the back. And those axles for the back. Got two of them. And then all this other stuff, except for these. These big things go on the back. Those things right over here, where I was pointing, but you couldn't see, they go to the back. These parts here, they go to the, I think, the back. Yeah, and then the rest of it's front stuff. So there should be enough there to make the car safe, I think. It was like one of those kits. They were uh, ordering it up on the internet from FT, FCP Euro, and... You could order each part individually, and then they said at the bottom, well, why don't you just take this whole damn kit? And I said, well, there's a good idea. I'll just take the whole damn kit, and then anything else I need, I'll get later. But I think I've got mostly everything here to make it roadworthy. I don't, yeah, it came with this bit. This bit here is, came with that. This rubber here I don't have, so I'll have to do something about that. And that rubber over there, right in there which I can't see anyhow, right up there, where is it, yeah, right there, didn't come with that rubber, so I'll have to fix that up somehow and figure it out, and in the back, it came with those things, and that bit there is the bit I was pointing at in the floor, and the big rubber thing goes in there, and the springs and shock absorbers here, that spring there, I don't know if you can see it up there, but make the light go so I can point. 
Oh, it's way over my head. Right up there, the spring, it's broken, that one. The other side, it's okay, but if one's broken, the other one's just as bad, I'm sure. Anyway, I'll get at it. Yeah, it all goes along pretty good until you get to big, big wrench time. So I had to take off the wheel and the brake and the hub and all that kind of stuff. The brake's just sort of hanging there. I'll clean that up after. To get to this bolt right down in here, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll put the light on it. There, you can see it. That bolt down in there. To get into that, I have to take off this brake back plate here. So to get that off, you got to take off the rest of this stuff here, which is all the interconnectedness of everything. So I guess we'll just see what happens when I take this big bolt out. It looked like I was the very first guy that ever looked in here because it was looked like a clean factory finish. So it likely needs a bit of grease and stuff and all. And I do have a big wrench. It's not a metric wrench, so it's not a perfect fit, and it's a half inch drive. But we'll uh, see if that'll pull that off of there. And then I got a somewhere on the floor here, cleverly disguised, is a wheel puller or you know a puller thingy. Anyway, oh there it is right there. This thing for pulling bearings. And then if that doesn't work, i got another thing that might do it. Anyhow, we'll just get at her. Yeah, there it is. That came out way easy. The big wrench took a bit of a turn on it, but everything else is pretty clean in there. And the bearing itself is in here. And it's got this gear thing on the end of it here. I don't know what the hell that does for sure, but... The bearing in there looks pretty good. Likely I could use a bit of grease in it before I put it back together. And that'll be alright. And it just they're just flat bearings in there. They're not they're not cone bearings. So you don't have to you just tighten it tight and that's good. That's the way it should be. That makes it easier for me. Yeah, so I got it apart here and I might as well order new wheel bearings and a brake rebuild kit on it. Because it's all apart anyhow, and that'll make things right. This bottom bit, I have to undo these bolts in here. Drop that off of there so I can take it to the bench and pound that out of there. Anyway, that'll come. That's on the list. Yeah, I don't know if you... Can you see that? Maybe. So this thing here is the control arm or yeah i think control arm is called and that's called the tie rod and then this thing here where it comes out of the steering box that might be called the pitman arm pitman arm now to get that thing off of here the control arm off of the pitman arm well i was Pounding away on it, and then I looked at the internet, and they showed this little tool. Lo and behold, I have one of these little tools, and I've used it before. I just forgot that I had it. Now, I'll be in, now, I'll see if I can figure out how to make it work, because it's kind of tough to get into that little spot right there. But we'll give it a go. Yeah, so there's the tool. It actually, it actually worked. I had to manufacture a little bit of a connector here so I could get it onto. I took a deep 13 millimeter wrench or socket and then I had to drill a hole through it hardened steel a little bit tough drilling holes through that and then a great big long extension up to here to reach way down past the motor but it did work and it's it's free there now you can see that the di see that in there there's the bolts free so I just got to take the nut off the top and pull it down now this side here, I've got all this apart, and there's the actual pitman arm there. That's the pitman arm, and it, it comes out pretty easy. It just 
fits up in a spot in here somewhere. Yeah, right there it fits. And then the control arm or the bottom control arm sits here, out to here. And it was a little bit tough to get off because I had to take all the brakes apart and everything and then get it out of this piece here, wherever it was. Yeah, it was right in this hole. <laughs> in this hole here that you can see my, the back of my finger on it. Anyway, that came apart, so I know it's easier to take apart the other side. Now, I don't have to take all the brakes and everything apart. I'll just take this bottom arm off of here, and that gets this off for me. And I will eventually get that all off, because I ordered new bearings and stuff, and I'll put them in. But I won't take that apart until the new bearings come. And I also ordered new uh, brake hoses all the way around, like here. On the other side and then in the back too. So actually I'm pleased with that because it was a bit difficult but I only whacked my finger once. Yay! There you go. Yeah so anyway I went looking on the internet to see how do I get that thing removed from the fitman arm there or the wherever it hooks onto the steering box and it came up with a tool that looked like this and I said to myself, gee whiz, I got one of those and somewhere. So I dug around and it was hanging on, hanging up over there. It had been hanging up over there for years on that shelf over there in different, different places. And I just, I remember using it years ago for something. But anyway, did the job and that's exactly what you need. Just a thing like that. Yeah, there we are. All the, got it all apart now. This bit here is only hanging from from the strut at the top and then this side here I didn't take the brake off this side yet which I will do but I'll put together the steering linkage first and nothing's nothing's hooked on underneath here anymore so now I have a new pitman arm to go in here and then this that's the steering gear thing from the from the, what do you call that, from the steering box, and it's okay, there's not much for any play in there. And then now I've got new pieces all the way across. Those two pieces there, they, they uh, remain original. But all this other stuff, that one there, that's all come out of it. And I'll take the uh, tie rod measurements right now, the way they are, and put it into the new one and then we can figure out what goes from there. But first thing I'll do is I'll put that control fitment arm and the control arm on and then I'll put the tie rods. Well, then I guess I gotta put this piece on the bottom here again. That looks like this thing here. That just sews up there and sits on that. Then I'll put the tie rods on. Hmm, what's the way to do it? Yeah, put the pitman arm, put the control arm, put the lower control arm here on, put the tie rods on, put the, I guess you call it an upper control arm here. I don't know what to call that damn thing. Thrust arm, I think it's called. And then after that, we'll put on the, the bracketing stuff. So I'll see how it works out. There we are. Yeah, when all else fails, read the book, and then I found out how to do it. So, there is torque specifications. So I've got this, where am I? Right there. I got this uh, control arm. Is it a control arm? Or is it uh, whatever it is? It holds the steering down there. There's one here, and then there's another one that comes across here to hold it all together. And there is a torque specification for this nut up in there, which I had to look it up. And you have to get that on before you put these three bolts in underneath here. Yeah, there you are. I got the new pitman arm in there and the new controller. Control arm? No, it's not tightened. It's tightened down on the pitman end of it, yes. But it's not tightened yet on the... Uh, 
steering box end, which I'll get to, I have to get to the, from the top. I was able to put the pitman arm on before I installed it, so it was easy to torque it. This one here, here we are. So that's got the lower control arm on here now, and that's hooked back on. I haven't torqued that in yet, or what do you call that? Torque wrench, yeah. I haven't torqued the, there's three bolts that hold this to the bottom. They have to be torqued in. But the, uh, this part here, this bolt here, is torqued in to the right amount. That thing, that thing there is a dust cover for the, for the traveling. Then, my torque wrench, which is, I wonder where that went. Oh, it's over here. Hang on, I'll get it. Here's the torque wrench. It's a pretty old school torque wrench. It's been around since, uh, likely, likely 50 or 60 years. And it only in, it's in foot-pounds only, there's no metrics on it. But it actually works pretty good. This... Where am I here? Wish I could get something to stay flat for a minute. Here we are. So this pole here is just a rigid pole that goes from where the socket is up until where the gauge is and then as this shaft bends it shows you how much torque you have on it which actually works I've used those clicker ones before and I just don't get them sometimes like you set the amount you want on them and they go click click and they seem to work alright but this thing here just reads right out on the onto the gauge there what exactly you have I have this size one and I have one that fits a 3 8 inch for lighter lighter duty yeah so there's the there's the 3 8 inch one this big one it'll go up to 100 foot pounds and the little one it only goes to 50 foot pounds but that's more than I ever wanted to crank on it these come from Debbie's my wife's my dearly departed wife's stepdad he when he was getting old he decided that he liked me and he started giving me all sorts of things so he gave me this he gave me this tool case full of tools that heavy duty like one inch drive stuff there that he had and then I used this one inch drive socket to you know to get the uh, wheel bearing and the wheel nut off and the wheel bearing there and that's pretty damn handy to have that stuff around plus a whole bunch of other stuff like these he gave me a whole bunch of uh, saws and you know a radial arm saw and things like that that are really quite handy he gave me a whole bunch of, they also gave me a bunch of acetylene welding stuff that had been sitting around for too long so all the all the all the rubber was rotten but that's okay it's a it was a nice gift there you go, it's all put together here again in the front. This new pieces there, new pieces there, new pieces underneath here, and then these new pieces there that go up to here. That hooks onto this stabilizer bar here. And this on the other side wasn't hooked in right, it was uh, hanging. So I've got it fixed on the other side, I'll show you. I can go around there and see it. And then, right in here, this was hanging down. It, there's a little hooky thing that it goes into back there. It was hanging down, so I fixed that. And then uh, in here, this stabilizer bar, the one bolt was different than the rest for some reason. I guess some repair a hundred years ago. And then that bit's new, and it hooks onto this stabilizer bar, and this is bit's new, and... That would be a torch, torque, torque bar, I think. New, and that would be uh, whatever you call that. I know the name, just can't remember it right now. Anyhow, all set and all set to go there. I still have to take the brakes off on this side, but I do have new wheel bearings for it somewhere over here. Where are they? Oh, yeah. 
Nice and shiny new that is. And this thing, this thing around the edge here is for counting the revolutions, I suppose. It doesn't turn anything, it just has a, I think that this little sensor right here must pick up magnetic pulses and says how many, how many revolutions there are. So I won't screw with that. Anyway, there you go. Yeah, here we are. It's one of these things here. That empty hole right there hooks onto the top of the car there, but see that's where the old thing is jammed in there. Gotta get that out, I guess, somehow. I think I'll figure it out. But this was the most difficult thing to get out. It says it's very simple the way they talk about it in the book. They say, you know, you just go in there with a special tool, blah, blah, blah and put it up there and then pull it out so i figured out a puller of some sort and i had it pulled pulled the middle right out of it and then i was left with the uh, outer rim still in there which i've now thrown on the floor somewhere well, here it is over here so the new one is intact with all the bits inside there but this is all that was left so i had to go and take my saw 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 it all, whatever it'll saw, and carefully cut that out without cutting the uh, casing out. So I was able to do that and then took a cold chisel to it. Well, actually this is, there's right side up there. Took, like I've got a power hammer on the, power hammer on the, on the thing here, whatever you call that thing, a pneumatic chisel. And then I was able to push it up and squeeze it in and then it popped right out. So I have to clean up in there. But this is what it looked like before, all that action. This bit in here. And then it was hooked on. There's that piece of metal goes across there. And up in the top here, I'll go over on the other side. Rust, rust, rust. Up in the top there's a little bit of, I don't know if you can see this, but where my finger is. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, surface rust on that, but it's not on the part that holds the car together. So I'll get that, see if I can clean that up and put a bit of welding in there to clean that and hold it all together again. I don't know what I'll do for sure, but I'll do something. And then I gotta, like I say, I gotta knock this bit here out, which is the old pipe, it just broke. Hmm, what do you know? Anyhow, that's, difficult yeah now there's a messy bit of work this thing here used to be i'll show you where in here somewhere right in there and it hooks into the top there you see that i have to knock out that little bit again on that side they both broke don't know why i guess they're just been in there for a while then the new bit there's there's the center of the other one kind of fell apart this one here stayed together and what I did was they asked for a special tool number blah 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 of course I don't have it here and so I put this bit of ready rod in there and then this bolt held it down the one where my thumb is held it down and then that bit there went into the top where the where the um, shaft goes through and I tightened it down Till it was pushing as hard as it could then i let the car down on the lift and then i've got a jack stand there so i let the jack stand rest right on here and push up and this contraption was pushing down in here and then that put a lot of pressure on it so it was pushing right out and then i just put the heat to here and uh, eventually it melted the rubber and went pop and came out this thing here was sitting about an inch off of the off the stand that's as much as it so when it popped it just fell a little bit and then that was that now up in there i've got a little bit of repair to work to do we'll take a look at that and see what i have to do about it i think it's actually pretty simple that one anyhow there we go i'll carry on these bits here get to be replaced i don't have the new rubbers for in here We'll drive it around for a while and then I'll decide whether I need new rubbers in there. And it could be 
back in here too, but those ones, they look like they're, they look like they're okay, but, you know, looks are deceiving. We'll see. All for now. Yeah, there I am. I'm getting the new piece in there, so I'm using the weight of the car. I've got it off the lift here. So the weight of the car is pushing up on that rubber insert there. And oh boy, oh boy, it takes a long time. It's been on there for about an hour now. A little bit of soap on it. But it slowly, slowly, slowly moves and sort of makes that gap smaller. I'm pretty close to where it's going to stop, I think, now. But we'll just see how. Give it a little while more. There now, you see that bit right there? Not much light here. Let me get the light. There we are. See that bit right there where it fits on there? Well, on the other side, I had some problems because of a rusted bolt that decided to uh, snap off on me. And then, so you got to have this bit here so it'll fit on there. That's what happens when the foam rides out of your hand. Now, I'll try it again. Wonder where I am here. Yeah, there we are. So this bit here has to fit in like there. So I had to manufacture a little piece for it. Here it is. Over here. So I made this copied it from what was there before. It had a double two pieces of metal on top of each other and then welded together and then the nuts are welded onto the piece of metal. So the bottom of it will look like that. And it might just fit in okay. Let me get the light over here. So it'll go up into here like uh, you see I've got a couple of curves in there to fit the hole. So it'll go up into there like that and that should uh, solve that problem I guess and then this will fit on top whoops this thing will fit over on top and then the end of it here is new rubber in there not new rubber there yet but there is new rubber over here on this side those two and that's new rubber in there anyhow we'll just see where we go 